during the break. So uh, next up is Amanda Payne from Kapla. So short. Can everybody? Hello over there. <laughs> uh, my name is Amanda Payne, and I work as the co executive director with the Canadian Association for Prior Learning Assessment. That's my reason um, for being here today is to talk about open badges with Kapla. I'm going to put just a quick little plug over on the side that um, my Monday to Friday 9 to 5 gig is that I also work um, in employment counseling under Employment Ontario and we have done some market research with employers based on competency-based hiring. So I'm going to leave that but if you're interested in more please come chat with me today. Um, so just a little quick background on Kapla. We um, are the only national nonprofit association for the recognition of prior learning in Canada and we have been around since, um, since the 1990s. We support recognition of prior learning for everybody, but of course, as a lot of people know in here, it tends to support those um, that are more at risk, whether it be um, for learning or, or for employment purposes. We provide a number of different professional development associations. We are a membership-based organization. Join Kapla today. You can find out more information on our website. Um, we provide webinars, conferences, a newsletter for our members. Um, we do have tailored training for organizations. Um, we've completed tailored training for international partners. Um, we have delivered open badges through the support of Don um, and his guidance within that. Um, and we are on social media, so please follow our, our networks on social media. Um, we do have a strategic advisory panel. We have members from government across Canada, which really is a, a great way to tap into what people are doing and trying to get the conversation going within each province and territory. Um, and we are a small but mighty team. And and we work uh, very, very diligently together. So a quick definition of recognition of prior learning because the time is ticking. I'm, this is going to be really fast. But basically, it's about um, identifying, documenting, and being assessed. Recognizing what people know, knowledge, skills, and abilities. It's really not hard. We don't need to make it hard. That's it. Um, so some thoughts about RPL. Um, it's definitely a movement in Canada. It's been a movement for a long time. It's not a pilot project anymore, so we need to get over that. Um, RPL is a labor force development strategy. It's really about bridging what people know and how people can move um, within the labor market. Um, there is some concern about the rigor of, um, of recognition of prior learning. Kapla has come out with a quality assurance manual, um, and that really, as we heard about today, you know you need to have the standard when you start, so it really sets the standard of recognition recognition of prior learning. Who's involved? We have people that are members um, from adults, students, advisors, assessors, employers, career counselors, regulatory bodies, military. Uh, military is really, really big on this within the last year. Government, immigrant serving agencies, um, just a, a bunch of really great people. So we have um, five key areas of recognition of prior learning, tools, systems, public policy, advising or career counseling, and assessment. We have um, offered badges within these areas, and we offered them because it's easy to say you can go to a conference. So your employer might send you to the Kaplan conference, but who's to say you didn't leave and go to the Eaton Center at lunchtime? I'm just saying, I don't know, maybe that happened. But this is a really good way for not only the person who attended the Capital Conference to assess their knowledge, skills, and abilities based on what they learned at the conference, but also for maybe employers who are sending someone to a conference to assess what that person came out with. So it's setting the standard to say, you know, I learned about tools and systems um, at the Capital Conference based on the Capital Quality Assurance Manual, and now I can challenge um, this badge. And so. Part of our challenge with badges has been um, 
it's a lot of legwork to get a badge going. So, um, you know, while we have the support of Dawn, we definitely have to set up the advising structure of the badge. And while we try to make it really clear and concise, there are still people that are coming after the conference going, I don't really get the badge. Can you tell me more about that? Um, and finding quality assessors. And because we have our own manual, we need to walk the walk and provide really good quality assessment um, and, um, you know, opportunities for people to challenge an assessment if it comes back not the way that they expected. Um, so it really sets the tone for somebody to prove that they are um, that they have taken the learning that they have from the Kappa conference, um, that they support Kappa as an organization, they can share it on LinkedIn. It's a great way to build your, your portfolio. So we are at a period of time where we have now delivered badges and we're at a period where we're going, what are we gonna do next with them? Um, so we are considering the uptake, how many people have um, you know, tried to access a badge, the time, the cost, and the sourcing qualifications of, of assessors. Like I said, we are a small but mighty team, probably not uncommon like many of you here today. So our question, our igniter challenge for you is how can these badges help our RPL practitioners and the adults that they serve? And a second one, how do we get more buy-in? Which is not a crazy question, but I think it probably relates to a lot of folks in this room. Thank you. Oh, it's zero. Okay, I made it. Perfect. Woo. Thank you.